Viet Friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. Tonight we're talking about closing in on cancer. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Monday. How are you, my friend? Man, I am doing great, and uh, I think it's high time we do another Let's Cure Cancer shows. This is something we kind of come back to from time to time, and one of my favorite things to do. So We're doing a week, a week of catch-ups this week. We're, we're going to catch up on Cosmic Mysteries on Wednesday, and we're going to catch up on general grab bag topics on Friday. But one of our, as you said, big recurring themes on the show is progress that's being made in a lot of different areas. We, we do talk about progress being made in the war on obesity, the war on aging, and various other diseases when they occur, but I think there is nothing as prominent in terms of diseases that we talk about as cancer, and rightly so. Obviously, that's, that's the big one to be solved in this world. And we've observed in the past that if we wanted to, we could probably do a podcast just about cancer research and just about the big breakthroughs that are being made have even glibly referred in the past to the cure for cancer of the week. We don't always do a cure for cancer every week, and these aren't three cure for cancers we're going to be talking about tonight necessarily, but it just goes to show you how rapidly interesting and very promising results are occurring and what it says for the future of people having to deal with all variations of this this terrible disease. So we got three stories here. The first one, new Australian drug puts cancer cells permanently to sleep. Now, what this story reminds me of is the idea of in anti-aging when we talk about actuarial escape velocity, or actually maybe it's more like the subhead of the Ray Kurzweil book on that subject where he said, live long enough to live forever. So here we have something that is not a cure for cancer. It doesn't get rid of cancer. It just shuts it down. Basically, they've identified these proteins, KAT6A and KAT6B, that affect the genes within cancer, and by manipulating them the correct way, you can go in and you can basically target the tumors within someone's body, and the cancer stop growing. So you don't cure it, you don't get rid of it, but the headline says put it to sleep, but I think that's a pretty good analogy. Basically, what they're doing yeah, is... No. They're, they're saying cancer just shut down for a while. And basically, as, uh, as far as they can tell, if you, keep, if you keep these switches switched in this direction, the cancer never starts growing again. So not a cure, but it would certainly buy time for someone who's working on well, maybe various treatment options. Well, depending on how permanent this is, Phil, I would argue it is a cure. What you're curing is the disease of cancer, right? I mean, the cancer, I mean, Literally, the cancer is still there, but it's not. You're not, if it's not making you ill, if you go about your life doing everything else, it's a, it's a cure. I would suspect, Bill, that most uh, elderly people that die of other reasons other than cancer probably have cancer somewhere in their body because you know yeah, that's it's a disease of the elderly. Mm -hmm. But if if it wasn't cancer that killed them, you don't you know that doesn't end up on the death certificate, does it? It's, it's something else and. Uh, for those people, they were they probably never considered themselves cancer patients. I guess it's a semantic kind of thing, but uh, I would say I would suggest this this is as good for the patient as as a cure. Well, uh, that's true. I mean, the, the, the thing is, if it keeps cancer from killing you to the extent that something right. else then later kills you, you can say you were cured of cancer. I, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, if it if it's uh, yeah if it if it's a if it really is a permanent go to sleep, uh, you know and it keeps you from getting uh, sick, then, yeah, I would say so. What I don't read here that's established uh, that I would want to see more of, and hopefully this is the case, is that a different kind doesn't pop up or that the same kind doesn't pop up in a new tumor, tumor eventually, right? Yeah. The, 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 those are the things where if you were cured, to me that's what I'm looking for in a cure for cancer, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm being very fastidious, I suppose, in, in how I'm going to define the term. To me, curative cancer means it's out of your body and it's not coming back. And right. there's never been a guarantee of that ever for anyone. 
So I'm looking right. for I'm look I'm looking for something down the road when I talk about a cure for cancer. I suppose. It sounds yeah. to me like you want a, a broad a broad spectrum uh, vaccine for everybody. That uh, you know you never had cancer. You're perfectly healthy. Come get this injection, and you'll never have cancer the rest. Well, of I do want that. Absolutely. I, yeah, I that's what we all want. want yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's what I would call a cure. I, I will yeah. be satisfied I to call it a cure when they have that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> that's that's, that's the right. only reason I, I don't purely call this a cure. But you're right. Effectively, for people, it would be if if yeah. the cancer's yeah. if the cancer has been shut down in your body, and, and it's a great. In engineering terms, you know, you call this a kludge, right? It's a, it's a great little solution that solves the problem. It's not elegant in the sense that there's still cancer in your body, and it's not the it's probably not the thing they were looking for initially when they came up with this. But I'm sure there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of cancer patients who say, "Yeah, I'll take it," right? If it actually works, right. if it shuts this stuff down. And very encouraging, very very promising for all the for all the wordsmithing around whether it's a cure or not. This is wonderful news, and it's oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we we are not trying to find the uh, the cloud for the silver lining. This is just all good. It's, yeah, uh, absolutely, fantastic news, and early stages here. So we hope to see lots more lots more developments around this. And I think it's just a very promising line of research. We're going to see this pops up is. Tweaking with the proteins, it seems that little adjustments here and there can have this tremendous impact on cancer in people's bodies. So, and this is a wonderful example. You know, it's like, well, it looks like if we adjust the, if we adjust these levels just right, we shut the cancer down, and that's that's a wonderful effect. Ultimately, that big cure may lay somewhere in the proteins too, or other other benefits that might be, accrue to cancer patients in terms of being able to strengthen their immune systems against cancer and lots of other possible ways forward for cancer. So I, I like this one in terms of what it offers, and I also like it in terms of what it implies for what might be coming soon. So there's one, and I think yeah. I think that, that's a good one. Uh, yep. This next one comes closer to cure, at least for the individual who uh, – received the treatment, but we've got the HPV vaccine eliminates advanced skin cancer in a 97-year-old patient. Uh, this is just awesome because it's like, that's right, she's 97, and she got the treatment, and it worked. There's something just totally cool in that part of the story, right? It's like, good, uh, because we don't give up on people because they're 97 years old, right? And also, you can still get sick sick when you're 97. In fact, you expect you're probably well. Out. I read this and I, I, I sort of found it slightly humorous because uh, you know the HPV vaccine is is something you get uh, to protect yourself, you know, in sexual relations, right? And so <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking the doctor is you know uh, injecting his 97 year old patient with this. And he sees an active future for her. No, that's not really what it was about. <laughs> this was on a hunch. Uh, that the doctor did this, he thought that this might it might have have some effect on the on this cancer. I'm glad he played his hunch because sure enough, it did. Well, and and what an interesting hunch! What a strange hunch to think. Okay, I've got a 97 year old patient. She's got skin cancer. I'm going to give her a mega dose of the HPV vaccine. And what happens? All the tumors rapidly disappeared. And in fact, tumors that were not injected with the HPV vaccine also reduced significantly in size. So, so, so this vaccine appears to have an impact on skin cancer that previously had not been asserted or detected, or at least I haven't read about or heard anything about. And right. this is the first instance of this that, that has occurred. So we're going to see a lot more on this, I hope. And it's, it's just extremely promising. But I think, you know, to go back to your original point, there's something to be said there for the fact that we're going to quickly reach a point where we no longer think that being 85 or 90 or 95 is you're essentially dealing with a walking dead person, right? Right. What you're saying kind of tongue-in-cheek is true, that you won't assume right. that, their, that their career is over, that their sex life is over, that that any of those things that we've just kind of written them off, right? It's like, well, 97 years old, what does that mean? It means she sits in a chair maybe if she's really healthy and lies in bed most of the time, right? That right, she, right. That, that she might have some memory of her life and 
hopefully her you know her days are not too unpleasant. I mean, the prognosis yeah. that we have in mind for a 97 year old is not great. It's it's yeah. We, we hope that we hope that she recognizes her children. You know, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. that's uh, you know often what 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 the, uh, the what the old image is. Well, it's, it doesn't have to be that way, and uh, we can, we should all be grateful for that. We look at a we look at a patient who's closing in on 100 years old, and we're thinking about that person's future. Is right. I, I think a very interesting. Not even the point of this story, right? It's just built into this story, and I think it's awesome. Well, you call this an off-label use, right? An off-label use of the uh, of the, this particular drug. It's not. It was. It was not made to. Uh, it's not made for the purpose of fighting cancer, but uh, it may. It may end up going that way, and that's that's neat. You know what it is, Stephen? It was a hidden possibility. That's right. what that was, and 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 it goes to show you that we've got a lot of these adjacent hidden possibles in medical treatment. Some of which I expect in the next few years are going to be made visible to us through the use of things like machine learning. But some of which we get lucky, a smart doctor has a hunch. I mean, God knows what <laughs> what led her to think that that might work. And it, may, it also makes you wonder, do we have doctors just trying all kinds of crazy stuff all the time, right? Or it, and it doesn't become a headline because it goes nowhere. In which case, that's a little bit scary. But on the other hand, man, when it works, something can kick in here, and it can do a lot of people a lot of good. So, Well, you know, I'm, I'm a supporter of the right to uh, right to try, right uh, to try. Uh, yeah. legislation, provided that the patient is in on it, not just being used as a guinea pig, right, and wants to try something um and and that's you know something that's something that's killing the patient and the and the doctor says look i've got a hunch this i want to try something but you need to know that this is just sort of a hail mary pass and uh, if it doesn't work it doesn't work but i, I want to try it uh, are you up for this if the patient's up for it look you know right to try you know that's the way i feel about it for sure if you're 97 right you should be able to try things I, oh yeah Exactly. There you go. We're not writing. We're not writing people off, but I, I think giving them additional freedom is uh, is very fair. That uh, in, in, once you hit the century mark, especially, it's like it's you're wide open, right? Who are, who's who are the rest of us to tell? <laughs> who are we that to age? say? Yes, exactly. yeah, what you can and can't do. We should be we, we should be respectful youngsters and and let them try what they want to try. Okay, so <laughs> I have corns older than you, son. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Come on, let me do what I need to do. <laughs> okay, our last one kind of goes to one of the themes you were talking about there, which is which is the repurposing of treatments for for other illnesses. Because this isn't primarily a cancer story, although it touches on cancer. The CAR T may be a silver bullet against cancer, and here's what else it can do. This is a great great piece over on Singularity Hub, and it mentions the fact. I think we've talked about CAR T before, but if we've missed referencing it, this is a good chance to at least add it to the things that we've talked about over the last year in terms of cancer treatments. I like the way she describes this. She says CAR-T is the super soldier of cell therapy. You pluck out an immune cell soldier, inject it with a dose of new genes, and send enhanced cell back into the host body, bam, suddenly the host has a slew of Captain America-esque super-powered cells ready to tackle cancer and all sorts of cellular enemies. So that's a great image. And if you follow this story, there's links to more detailed stories about how CAR-T is being used specifically against cancer. It was developed for that. And it's this, it's this enhanced immune system going in against cancer. And we've talked for years now about how the body's own immune system might be the most effective treatment for cancer. So this idea of an augmented immune system where you take, you take your immune cells and you tweak them and you put them back in and boom, Suddenly, you're fighting cancer in all new way is exciting, but the you know this- there, we we had on the show Phil um, years ago uh, a doctor that was working on a therapy where you he'd actually uh, um, take you know ha- have a blood transfusion from a young person usually in the summertime because for some reason in the summer you're out in the sun and you just you're just healthier for whatever reason you take a mm-hmm. blood transfusion from a 20-something-year-old uh, in the summertime and put it into somebody that's fighting cancer, and he was seeing good results. It was, yep. basically, it was uh, superpowering their immune system. Yep, that and, was Dr. Uh, Dr. Zwing C is who that was. Well, that's right. 
That's right. I, I suspect that what we're seeing here is a zeroing in of what was really going on in that early, early type therapy. That's my hunch. <laughs> so, uh, well, take that I, I, think, will. I think you're right. It, it's been it's been demonstrated for years now that our own immune systems potentially have the capability to shut cancer down. And oh, I, I, I don't think there's any doubt. In fact. Most people that have, uh, that think that they've never had cancer before probably have, and their and their immune system took care of it. Right. Just things can go wrong, and when when your cells divide, and usually the body realizes it and attacks it, and it's done before you know you're you've got a problem. And, yeah, that's uh, when everything but, works the way it's supposed to. When it doesn't, right, then you get cancer, right? That's and right. So it's like, well, how do you cure cancer? Well, you can say, well, let's go find some exotic material that will fix cancer, or you can say, oh, wait. Maybe we can get that immune system, which was going to deal with it anyway, to fix it. And that's what that's what uh, we were working on. We're going to turn you into Captain America to fight this off. I love and that. That's I what, love that. And image. that's what Car yeah. D does. That's right. Exactly. That's, uh, awesome. that's That's what it does. So, But if you read the story, more good news, it's also now being looked at as a potential treatment for a whole host of autoimmune illnesses, which when you think about it only makes perfect sense since it's a boost to the immune system. And... This is my take, my personal speculation. You heard it here first. As I read this, CAR-T looks like it might be something that will eventually be effective in treatment of aging, that, that the damage that's done to our cells that we call aging might be something that can be addressed by an enhanced immune system, as described so here. You have, you, let's let's imagine you have a senescent cell in your body, Phil. I, I, you know, I, I, I find that hard to believe in someone so young, Phil. But you, let's we, imagine you have say a... Say I senesc- have one or two, absolutely. One absolutely. or two, yeah. yeah. Uh, you have one or two of these senescent cells. You, you have a CAR-T immune cell that encounters it, uh, takes care of it, right? Takes it out. And, uh, and, and instead of uh, your body trying to feed and nurture... This old cell, it's removed from the body, and, and younger, more potent cells are what you were left made of, right? Exactly. So, you you, you cool. grow a, a younger, healthier base version of yourself over time. Now, that's a right. great model. All kinds of scary potential ways that could go wrong, clearly, when, when, you, right. when you're putting something in to start, shutting, start attacking your own cells. That becomes almost cancer in its own right. But it's going after the right ones, right? It's, it's hitting the ones that you absolutely want to hit. Anyway, that's our speculation. Um, and, it, and it just goes to show you that cancer treatments are not only offering hope for cancer patients, but also offering hope across the board for all of us. So... And, and since we're all awesome. potential cancer patients, I, I guess that, that that only makes sense. It's too. sort of redundant, almost. Even, even if uh, you never uh, were destined to suffer from cancer, then uh, there's we are, are all getting older too. So that's pretty. Yeah, cool. offering offering additional hope, uh, autoimmune, potentially aging, and we'll probably see some other things as well. So we will stay tuned. There's a lot more good news on cancer to come, and we'll be reporting it. That's going to do it for this edition of The World Transformed. Stephen, great talking with you. Great having you all with us. We will be back on Wednesday with a brand new show. And until next time, live to see it. 